Can't believe this is actually finished. Hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And I just finished making 40 videos on writing your own 3D collision systems in Game Maker from scratch. This took a little longer than I expected it to, and this was by far more dense math than I ever expected to do on the C2 channel, but you know what? It was actually pretty fun to make, and I hope you all got a usable 3D collision system out of it. So before I get into the really post-mortem-y bits of this video, there are a few errors that I found along the way that I don't think I ever addressed properly earlier in the series, so I guess this is my last chance to do that. In the ob class, the get edges calculation is slightly wrong. If you've ever tried to draw the bounding box around an ob, you might have noticed that a few of the edges aren't where they should be. The version on the left is how I had written it down, and the version on the right is what it should be. In the capsule class, you can kind of tell where I was just copying and pasting stuff because sometimes I forgot to change the correct value. Uh, the get max method is a copy paste of the get min method. Obviously, that's not correct. When we're getting the min and max extents of the transformed model, the mesh bounds is an axis align bounding box, and the size variable there is called half extents again. Might have been a little bit simpler if I just called it size, but if you want your code to not crash, you're going to have to use the correct variable name. And... I feel like I should have talked about this earlier, but I couldn't find anywhere where I did, so I guess I forgot. Uh, the triangle and line intersection test uses a raycast from the beginning of line to the end of the line, and is therefore one-sided because raycasts against triangles are one-sided. You can keep this as, you, as it is if you want, because realistically lines aren't going to be a shape that you use much in a 3D collision world. You're probably going to use a raycast in most situations, but you can fix this by either pretending the triangle has two faces and raycasting against like the front face and the back face of the triangle. You can fix this by editing the raycast code to ignore the part where the result is discarded if the raycast is passing through the back of the triangle. You can create two rays, one in the forward direction of the line and one in the reverse direction of the line. It's up to you. Anyway, this project is 4,000 lines long, so I wouldn't be surprised if there are other errors that exist in it. Hopefully nothing that will completely break the 3D collisions themselves, because I like to think I tested that pretty thoroughly. But if you find one, the GitHub repository is publicly available. You can file an issue on the repository, or you can fork it and create a pull request. Speaking of the GitHub repository, so at the end of pretty much every video, I've been tagging a release, and they've been going like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on for every video. And now that this is complete, I'm finally going to merge in the... Uh, I'm going to merge in the optimization branch into the main branch, and I'm going to call that 1.0. Over time, I will continue making fixes if I find any additional errors, and I will continue adding optimizations that I mentioned in the previous video. I expect that to be a bit of a long-running process, like the sort of thing that I spend a few hours every week just optimizing this or that uh, shape or routine or something. You saw how much some operations could be dramatically sped up in the last video by doing certain things, and if you find any additional interesting performance deltas, I'll probably like show them on screen or something right now. And then lastly, I'm not sure if I'll have this up by the time this video is posted, but I do want to put this project on itch.io just because that's like an easy and convenient place for people to find all the stuff I've made. As usual, it'll be a free with an option to make a donation if you want. I should be keeping that updated whenever I fix a bug or add an optimization or whatever. And if Yo-Yo Games ever fixes their marketplace, I might put it on there too, who knows. Moving on. Over the years, a few people have asked me if I'm going to cover other 3D collision systems in Game Maker, the most prominent one being the Snitter's 3D collision system, Call Mesh. And I do want to do that eventually. His system is architected in a bit of a different way than mine is, but you can do pretty much most of the same things. I think he's got a few different collision shapes that you can use, like uh, donuts or cylinders. Torai is the... Uh, math word for a donut. I do want to go there eventually, but I think after I do this, I want to not think about 3D collisions ever again for a long time. So that might not necessarily be soon. And uh, Patrick Kreif, he's got his own thing uh, known as BB Mod, which is a little bit bigger and it's got a bit of a steeper learning curve, I think. But I also plan on going there eventually. Again, probably not soon, but it is on my list. What I'm going to do next is, one, uh, take a nap, because I just spent almost two and a half years doing 3D collisions in Game Maker, and I'm tired. And after that, I want to finally continue working on the, uh, the 3D Wizard game, Zelda like slash platformer slash whatever. I kind of decided to sort of procrastinate that uh, until this was finished, because I decided that having the 3D collision system finished 
and available for me to use in that project would save me quite a bit of headache. And you'll see a big example of that in whenever I get the next video on that up. And I'm probably going to try and like play catch up on that for a little while before really getting into more like Game Maker tutorial material. Because I did drop like six weeks of progress out of nowhere trying to finish this up. And I'd still like to hit some of the milestones I tried to lay out for myself way back in the beginning of that series. And I've kind of just blown through a couple of them and I'd like to get them back on track. After that, I'm going to continue making like normal tutorial videos, obviously. I don't have anything planned for any like long multi-part episodic tutorial series. Um, there's a couple things on my mind that I might do. People keep asking about skeletal animations and I'm tempted to say that's what I'm going to do next, but I also kind of want to wait to see Game Maker's new runtime come out and see what that adds to the graphics capabilities in terms of like web GPU, because there's a chance that um, a lot of the shader things that I have in my mind could be made a lot easier by that. And there's also a bunch of other 3D graphics techniques, normal mapping, um, specular highlights, that sort of thing that I haven't actually touched yet somehow. So I might go there. Haven't decided yet, we'll see. Lastly, now that this whole thing is said and done, I think there's a few special mentions that I need to shout out right here. First and foremost, anyone who watched any of these videos, whether you were just here for one or two looking for something specific, or you actually sat through and watched the whole thing beginning to end, in which case, wow. Some other people that I owe a big old thank you to, I've mentioned time and again the main source that I've gotten most of the information in these videos from has been uh, Gabor Zauer's Game Physics Cookbook. None of these videos have been sponsored by him, but let's just say that my copy of the book is starting to get a little bit beat up from the amount of times I've opened it and looked through it to reference something. If I ever somehow get to meet Gabor at, I don't know, a GDC or something, I definitely owe him a sandwich. I'll have a link to both his book and the GitHub repository that goes along with it in the description of the video. And then, of course, there is the one and only heavy metal Viking dentist, Cinder Larson, who many of you probably know as the Snitter, who, in addition to contributing to um, a Patreon, which is very nice of him and I'm very appreciative of, has also spent quite a bit of time answering various dumb questions that I've had about this, that, and the other thing. Having someone on hand who knows more about geometry than any one human realistically should be expected to know all in his head at the same time definitely made some parts of this whole thing a lot easier. I don't think he has a website or anything like that, but I will have a link to some of his projects on his YouTube channel down in the video description as well. And I think that is about everything. 40 videos on 3D collisions in Game Maker. I think this has gone on for longer than a lot of my Let's Plays. So I think that's it for me for now. I will have links to everything that I just mentioned down in the video description. I try to post a couple of game dev videos a week, so if anything of this nature appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. If you want to contribute to this insanity, and thank you so much if you do, links to the Patreon can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, this has been 3D Collisions in Game Maker, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Manta Ray, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.